You're not dreaming, you're watching Cinema Insomnia. And with me, electronically, in the studio, is one of our all-time favorite people. Uh, John Stanley is mentioned a lot on Cinema Insomnia. In fact, he's appeared on several episodes of the show. Uh, he's taken over the show a couple of times. We often read from the uh, Creature Features movie guide when we come back from our intermission where we will read John's description of the film uh, when appropriate. And uh, John uh, has been a reviewer for The Chronicle. Uh, he has been, he, he has uh, interviewed countless, hundreds of celebrities, genre celebrities, uh, and has made uh, his name with Creature Feature fans, certainly through uh, his writing, his, his books, and uh, he's got a brand new book that is absolutely wonderful, has a lot to it. Um, this is called The Career That Dripped With Horror. And this is all about uh, John's career. There's so many celebrity interviews in here. And what I find interesting is that John not only uh, is sharing a lot of his experience with um, interviewing celebrities, but there's so many stories, anecdotal stories, stories about creature features, stories about the whole horror host revival. John, thank you for coming on the show. I'm eager to talk about your new book. Thank you for inviting me on your show, Mr. Lobo. I really do appreciate it. I have known you now <laughs> for I know. close to 15 years. Uh, and. Uh, and it's uh, remarkable how you evolved out of the creature feature market that Bob Wilkins and I had established in the Bay Area. I'll, I'll John, tell you more about that later, but. Uh, John, you know what I think, John, I think we go back over 20 years. Has it been that long? Oh yeah, well, from well, uh, think 1999. Because think about this, John. Yes. yes. Okay, my show, 27th of, of July, 2022 will be 21 years of this show of Cinema Insomnia. Okay, then that's how long. That's when we met, 1999. 1999. We that's a long time ago. We were doing a show ago. in Sacramento at a music yep. club, and uh, Harlow's. It was called Harlow's. Bob Wilkins and I had been invited there, and you were there. I think you. Uh, that's when Bob recommended that you might want to become a horror host yourself. He, he, he definitely pushed me in that direction, and I thank him for that, because I, I don't think at that time I had the confidence to, w I think his encouragement was really key in Absolutely me necessary. pursuing that. Yeah. I remember him saying, you should, you should sit in a chair and host movies. And I remember saying, Bob, this is about when we were kids and this thing that you did. And he said that, you know, there's this whole, everything has a cycle. Everything has a, you could be on the new wave of a, another generation of horror movie hosts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just uh, remember shaking my head thinking, I, 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 don't, I don't really know if I, I, I really could do that. But it made me feel good that he thought I could do that. Yes, yes. And it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> John, I feel like you're interviewing me. Am I interviewing well, you or are uh, you interviewing me? Remember, you you were uh, the one who introduced my uh, film documentary about being a TV horror host, remember? I was on Edward Von Sloan. At, uh, Castro Theater. <laughs> I was Edward Von Sloan, and John yeah. and I watched that intro to Frankenstein like 20 times and we went yeah. over every okay he looks out over the audience here and he does here john is a very good director i felt like i had a little taste of what it was like to be on the set of nightmare and blood <laughs> ah yes that was a film that uh, i made back in the 70s uh at a time when i was working at the chronicle uh in retrospect how i put that movie together and still worked full time at the Chronicle uh, amazes me. <laughs> That's incredible, John, because I think a lot of movie critics love movies, and, and, and I think a lot of critics w would love to be a filmmaker. And did you find that your own criticism got in the way of your creativity? <laughs> uh, 
uh, fortunately, there was a co-worker at the Chronicle named Ken Davis. He was an artist. Uh, yeah. He did paintings and artwork. And in fact, in my uh, new book, the the uh, did he do did he do some of the art the in career this career that dripped with horror? There's uh, oh, I th I think there's close to seventy five sketches by Ken. Uh, he used to do a sketch for each letter of the alphabet, and we put those all in alphabetical order. And uh, it's in the book. It's wonderful. I'm going to try and find that. Yeah. Well, let me see here. <laughs> Who else going to find it first? Here we go. I got it. Here we go. Did you find it? Yes. The A to Z of fantasy, fantasathon. A to Z fantasathon is what it says. What page A is to that Z on now? <laughs> fantasathon. And what page? At, at that page is 140. And okay. it just keeps going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, the letter A in one of my uh, book editions is the alien from the film Alien holding the letter A. <laughs> yes, the alien from the film Alien. Yes, and uh, there's the also an a. a with the faces of all the members of the Adams family. And then uh, Ken did a sketch of an alligator, and he put the oh, letter A in its mouth. <laughs> and B, of course, was Batman. And uh, so it goes all the way through the alphabet, filling Ken, over seven pages. Ken was a great artist. Yeah. He now, he did work on this one, too, didn't he? Didn't he, didn't he do the work yes. on this? He did uh, the, three episodes, uh, the three books that I published myself. Ken did uh, 26 sketches for uh, each book. And we took the best of those and uh, put them in this book. The career that dripped with horror. Now, John, you have a very you have a very distinct way. <clears throat> you have a very distinct way of putting a book together. It's almost there's so many pictures and changes in typeface and uh, all sorts of artwork. You know, you 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 put a lot into the book, much more than words. You have a very yeah. do, you, do you have a yes. you have a, a philosophy behind the style of your book? Yes, yes, and I'd like to explain. Uh, back in the 1980s, when I had started my own publishing company, um, I had the opportunity to publish the autobiography of John Mitchum, who was the brother of Robert Mitchum. Yeah. So it was the story, in part, it was the story of Robert Mitchum. And uh, John had gathered many photographs together. Now, most books, autobiographical books, only have a few photographs. They usually put them in the middle of the book. Sometimes they're in color or black and white. And you only see a very limited amount of, of visuals to go with the book. Well, I felt that if John is describing a character on a certain page, let's get that character up there. Uh, a, a scene from a certain movie, whether it was a John Mitchum movie because he was an actor like his brother or a Robert Mitchum movie or film uh, pictures of the family, mom and dad, when they were uh, just kids. And as each, as each chapter progressed, I made sure that there were pictures on almost every page illustrating what John was writing about so you could see it and absorb it into uh, the texture of the book. It's a very thorough experience. It's like it's like being in someone's uh, photo album or family scrapbook. Uh, yes, and that's the way it should be for a biography or an autobiography. That's very exciting. How long did it take you to put this together, John? Because there's a uh, lot in this. My good friend uh, Dennis Willis, who is associated with Soundwaves TV, uh, he does a, a show. He was doing shows every week here in the Bay Area. And uh, I would get together with him once a week and we'd lay out a few pages. And uh, it took a little over, I think it took a little over a year, maybe 15 months or so to lay the whole book out because of its complications, uh, you know. It's a, it's a beautiful- We it's wanted a beautiful... art on every page, just like it... I wanted with the Mitchum book. I, I said, if we're writing about some, somebody, let's get their picture or it's a scene from one of the movies they're talking about. Uh, let's, let's make it as visual as, and attractive as possible.
it's a beautiful book. There's so many pictures. It covers so much. And, and on a personal note, uh, you know, you did an excellent job because I haven't seen anyone writing about this anywhere. Uh, when we met in 2000 and there was this whole horror host revival happening, you know, you wrote about this revival and how... Oh, we... yeah. There's a chapter that starts the book, how Bob Wilkins and I uh, came back before the public and appeared in shows. And that's when you joined our ranks. And when we started appearing at the Wonder Cons, uh, we appeared at the Castro Theater, uh, at least in a couple of shows every year, the Balboa Theater. Oh, yeah, Theater. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you were always a part of that. Well, I appreciate uh, you 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 talking about that and 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 uh, commemorating all the great times we had doing all of our horror host revival shows. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess we succeeded, right? We brought horror hosts back. Yes, I, I think we did. Uh, the ones who had seen us on television, my God, there they were lined up uh, to get into the theaters or to see the shows we were in. It was utterly amazing. It made us realize just how important the horror host shows were to the younger generations. Uh, of course, everything changes as time goes on. But, John, uh, what do you think? What do you think the importance of a host is? Like, why is a host? Why is a film host so important? Because a character is formed. Uh, even in the case of me or Bob Wilkins, we didn't have costumes. We weren't pretending to be uh, Lord uh, Blood Raw. <laughs> you weren't a mad scientist just, or a witch. Like or, you. Yes, mm -hmm. you're just a man in a suit wearing a tie. You know, everything's normal. But, sort of uh, normal. It's the, it's the things you can draw out of that character that uh, creates your character, the horror host character. Uh, just look at Elvira, for example. What does she have that you don't have? <laughs> she Mr. has a Lobo? couple of things. She's got a couple of things I don't have. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, it's a generational thing. It's a generational thing, and I think, and I would say a horror host is a companion, and I think yes. that... It's someone you're looking forward to, to seeing each week. He's not he, just a new guy reading news. He's a horror a, host he talks is a character. to you. There are, there are certain elements, and uh, you enjoy those elements, and uh, what, what I tried to do as a creature feature host, I wanted to get out of the studio and I would make what I would call a mini movie, M-I-N-I -I movie. Uh -huh. uh, for example, I would meet the dir a director of a horror film at a cemetery and we would uh, drive through the cemetery in a hearse. I saw doing that film. The, uh, doing the interview. Don Coscarelli, you, you were yes. in, a, you were in an, a limo with the tall man, Angus yeah. Scrimm. And yeah. you talked about the movie Phantasm and I thought they were gonna bury you by the end of that. <laughs> They threw interview. me out of the van at the end. Yeah, they threw you out. That's right. They threw you out. Did you do your own stunts for that? Uh, yes. <laughs> Didn't have you got thrown out of a hearse Irish by the tall Irish. man for an interview. <laughs> anyway, that was the beginning of doing uh, these very unusual movies. Uh, yeah. Short, short subjects. I did them with Chuck Norris, for example. Uh, we did two separate uh, movies. I met him in a martial arts uh workshop yeah in the first one then the second one he was making a film in the bay area an eye for an eye mm -hmm. and i went on location and i was able to interview him uh as if i were a character coming into the location <laughs> uh richard roundtree had a pistol he says hey get your hands up who, who do you think you are <laughs> trespassing on our property <laughs> I, so, I think it's wonderful that you got them to play with you. Was yeah, that hard sometimes? Got them to, to play it out, yeah. Or the uh, attack of the incredible killer scarecrow. There was a scarecrow contest in Vacaville. Um, at the nut tree, right? The, near the nut tree, yes. And mm -hmm. uh, I was able to film an entire episode there. Uh, it ran in two parts, actually, yeah. I always anyway, loved was, how much how much how much creativity you brought to the to the show. You did a lot of production in that show. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, in fact, I put together a two disc set uh, 
called John Stanley Meets Jack the Ripper. Uh, we did a thing at a, at a wax museum at Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, the idea is that the Jack the Ripper comes to life at midnight and chases beautiful women down, <laughs> down the aisle. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, now, you, you, are, are your DVDs available on your website along with your book? Uh, no, a lot of them are out of uh, circuit. Out of print? Now. What about there, I Was a there TV? There are a few that I, I sell. What about I Was a TV Horror Host? Can we still get that? Yeah, you can order that through the book. It's uh, okay. on one of the last pages of the book, yes. Oh, great. Wonderful, because I think I need a fresh copy of that. Oh, <laughs> And we, and we want to get a bunch of these for my fans out here on the East Coast because I think they would be very fascinated by this. So we'll get some, we're going to get a, a bunch of copies of this okay. from you. Yeah, we can make a deal. And then uh, tell them your, the website is stanleybooks.net. Yes, that's correct. Um, you can order the book uh, through there and uh, I will be able to sign it. Uh, just tell he's me. He's got a special who page you want here. The book signed to or how you want it signed. And uh, there's a special page. Uh, a signature page, yeah, in the front. And I will be happy to sign the copy to you directly. Yes, John will sign this for you. And, uh, uh, and, and what a wonderful thing. Makes a great gift, right, John? Yes, I think so. Every Creature Feature fan should have one of these. Yeah. Every horror film fan should have one yeah, of these. Yeah, horror film fan. Uh, it's full of interviews with uh, G. The list goes uh, on and on. Let me just read a few names, if it's all right. Yeah, go right ahead. Stephen King, early in his career, describing how he wrote his novels. Arnold Schwarzenegger, after he made Conan the Barbarian, his first major feature. Yes. Gary Fisher, uh, Mark Hamill, and others uh, who were in The Empire Strikes Back in the Star Wars series. Awesome. Ray Bradbury, Robert Block, the author. Ray Bradbury, of Robert Block. I have a lot of pictures of Robert Block I took at his home. Adam West, he was a close friend for many years. Christopher Reeve. Wow. Superman. Uh, also, I met uh, Brandon and Bruce Lee both. And I was able to put together an article about uh, the careers of both of them. Oh, that's wonderful. Chris Carter, how he created X-Files. Uh, Noel Neal, who played Lois Lane, Erwin Allen, who produced so many different. Uh, oh, TV. sure. Yeah. You know, Lost in Space. Lost in Space. Yes, famously. Yeah. And uh, Ridley Scott. Gee, I got a wonderful interview with him uh, on Alien. Uh, One of the great horror sci fi films of all time. Yeah, it's, it's all here. Yep. And. Uh, and much more. We haven't even discussed the creature from the Black Lagoon. Barely scratched <laughs> the surface. Julie Adams. Oh boy, Julie Adams. Oh, wasn't she something? I have she to can, tell you, she can rock had, a one piece like nobody knows. Nobody's her business. Her legs had been insured by Lloyd's of London for uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Her legs? Her legs. Yeah, she was considered to have the most beautiful legs in Hollywood. Wow. And when she came to the Bay Area around, uh, I think it was 2006 at the Castro Theater. She came on stage wearing uh, slacks all the way down to her shoes. But uh, Ben Chapman, who played the creature in the yeah, land scenes, the land creature. came out on stage in the pair of shorts. And you could see his legs all the way down to his shoes. <laughs> and and thought, Ben Chapman's legs ironic. were insured for $20. How ironic we're seeing uh, Ben's legs, but not, uh, not Julie's. How unfair, how unfair. Yeah. Well, John, I, I always love how you bring humor to everything. I love your criticisms. I, I, your writing is like moist cake. Oh, I, I implore everyone to get your book, uh, Creature Features Forever. And thank you so much, John, for coming on the well, show again and again. I, we gotta get you back on to be my nemesis or something. <laughs> I love talking with you. And I wish you and your wonderful wife, Dixie, uh, the best for the future. Thank you, John. My pleasure. Cinnamon Sonia signing off.